knowledge of any uh, wrongdoing of any. Yeah, I'm very comfortable saying that. I'm very comfortable saying that nobody did it. As far as I know, I don't know everything. I also understand that I, you know, was in a locker room preparing for a game for five. Hours. I don't know what happened over the course of the process with the footballs. I was preparing for my own job and doing what I needed to do. All right, joining us now is our NFL analyst, Brian Dawkins. Yesterday, very strong on this, had a very strong take, so to speak. You said you just have a hard time believing that no one knows anything. So quite simply, do you believe Tom Brady? That's, sometimes in, in, in this career, and I just started it, obviously, a couple of years ago, so you have to step back and look at everything. Look at yourself and, and digress. And as I think about what happened yesterday and, and, and the anticipation of what we thought was going to happen, because I know I'm not the only one who thought that someone would own up, someone would come forward and say, you know what, it was my fault, my bad, this is what happened, this is what did not happen. And when that did not happen, your expectations of the event changes. And I do know this, and you know, being married, that expectations, if you have your expectations too high sometimes, that's, like, that's, that's not a good thing. Mm -hmm. You can have high expectations, but when they're too great and that person does not line up to your expectations, you then get emotional about those things. And so yesterday, as I began to listen to um, Tom Brady talk about how he does not know how the balls, the, the footballs um, got deflated, I just thought back to my experience with my uh, every equipment guy that I've ever been with. John Hatfield, Greg, who's there now with Philadelphia, Flip in, in, in Denver. They would never ever do anything to any part of my equipment that I did not ask them to do ahead of time or I had already asked them to do. So for instance, if I gave them my shoes and I said, these shoes are so tight, I, I want to break them in. Every week from then on, he would put them on a shoehorn to stretch them out a specific way for me to use them. So that being said, towards the end of the season, if someone then saw my shoes and said, why are they stretched out? I know why they're stretched out because I told him early in the year, this is how I like my shoes. So for me to believe that Tom Brady, um, you know, did not tell one of the equipment guys, even the ball boys. I know, you know, Greg and some of the other guys that I've known over the years, great young men. They're only going to do what I ask them to do. And so right now, something is quacking like a duck. It's walking like a duck. It has feathers. Mm -hmm. All those things, all those cliches. We know that there is a duck. The problem is we don't know who's the owner of the duck. We still haven't had anybody mm -hmm. to step or, or, up. Let, let me quote the great Stephen A. Smith. Right. It, it ain't a damn mongoose, right? Yeah. Isn't that how it goes, Stephen A.? Thank yeah. you. And, That's how and, it goes. Right. Yeah. And for me, after today, because we are back where we started out, I'm ready to talk about the game. I'm ready to talk about Seattle. I'm ready to talk about the Patriots playing one another because of what it looks like to me because the NFL has not interviewed any of the guys yet. <laughs> that they're going to push this probably past the Super Bowl. And we're going to be talking about this after the Super Bowl at some point. So if that's the case, let's just let, I'm, I'm ready to start talking about the game so we can move on for this because nobody's going to step yeah. up and take ownership. Well, here's the problem with your position, Brian. I don't blame you one bit because I share your sentiment. However, by not talking about it and by talking about and trying to talk about the game, I think that you're going to have people walking into the game literally questioning everything in terms of the legitimacy of competition that's taking place. Yeah, instead of talking about the matchups per se, they're going to be alluding to what maneuvers, what in, in, in discretions, transgressions, or whatever the case may be, will the Patriots try to employ to win this football game? There's no way around it. Whether it's the NFL's fault or that of the New England Patriots themselves, they've created a situation where this story matters just as much as the game until game day actually arrives. And that's the problem. That's what we're, we're confronted by right now. Okay, back to Brian's original point. Should someone have stepped up yesterday, the coach or the quarterback, and said, my bad? <sighs> Brian, you can't tell me that the commissioner or some of his representatives haven't been in close touch with the coach and the quarterback this week. Maybe not to find out who did what, mm -hmm. but just to tell them, if you stand up and say, my bad, we might be forced to suspend you from the Super Bowl game because the integrity of the AFC Championship game would come into even greater 
question. Mm -hmm. The public would be further outraged. So I again, you, you got a good heart, and and that's what Brian would do. Brian probably wouldn't have done. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't have deflated the ball to start with. But but Brian would have stepped up and said. Yeah, you got me on this one. You know, yeah, we blah blah blah. Well, you can't do it right now, and yet this is just me and Stephen A. and I are on opposite sides of this fence. You and I are on opposite sides because I'm not giving the coach a pass here. You're pretty much putting it all on the quarterback because the equipment people are only going to do what the quarterback says. In this case, in all my years of covering the National Football League, I have never encountered a coach who is more of a control freak than this coach. Great attention to detail. So if he finds out 13 years ago that his quarterback prefers a ball that's slightly deflated, mm -hmm. just slightly below the norm, you don't think that the man who pays such close attention to detail that he brings out different bad balls to practice with, he wouldn't tell his equipment men, this is how we're going to do this. The NFL has given us great leeway here to scuff the ball or, or prepare the ball, wet the ball, whatever we want to do with the ball to get it ready for the game. So why not just a little bit, again, two pounds per square inch is not a ton. It sounds like a lot, but it's it's not a lot. It's just slightly underinflated because the quarterback prefers that. They've been together for 13 years. You don't think the head coach control freak knew that? You don't think he might have ordered the equipment manager? I want every ball prepared for Tom this way. So I'm not going to put it all on the quarterback. Quarterback. And again, the coach came across great yesterday because I think he is far more accomplished at publicly dodging the truth mm -hmm. than the quarterback is. I think the quarterback's heart's in a good place. I think he was highly uncomfortable yesterday oh, yeah. because he was thrust into a position of not telling the truth. And I believe he was in a way covering for his head coach and he's not very accomplished at dodging the truth and so he came across very very poorly I, I in think, his interview. Well, 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 well Skip Bayless is something that you may not be considering here um, and again I'm not casting these aspersions on Tom Brady I don't know but just based on what we're seeing from the periphery, he looked shaky, he looked uncomfortable, he looked nervous in that press conference. Why do we have to put it on his inexperience in being in this position? Why can't we entertain the possibility that there we, there we say he might be lying? Let's keep this in mind, Skip Bayless. Richard Sherman. What did Richard Sherman say? What did he say a couple of days ago that we addressed yeah. yesterday? Yeah. He is Mr. Brady is not what you all project him to be. Well, maybe that's it. So well, what I'm saying is, listen, we I'm not I I, I want to be very very clear. All I care about B dog is the Super Bowl. Yes. All right? I I'm not trying to sit on some moral high ground or whatever like I think a lot of people are trying to do. Although I'm not going to blame them for that. I just don't care. Uh, because I saw the Colts get stomped. And the Patriots have been winning for years. I don't want to hear about some deflated football being the cause. That's me. I'm not, I'm not acknowledging, I'm not denying that they probably are lying. I'm not denying that they probably did skirt the rules. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying I don't believe that has dictated their success over these years, certainly not this season and definitely not this past Sunday in the AFC Championship game. But what I am saying is if we're going to address it, Skip, let's not address it in a fashion where we're giving Tom Brady some kind of pass. Well, he's uncomfortable because he's not accustomed to being in this position and all of this stuff. Damn it, he ain't accustomed to being held to the carpet. He ain't accustomed to possibly getting caught, maybe. that's a, We'd be asking that question about anybody else. Okay, but what what I, makes Tom Brady get away with that? Uh, what did I tell you in the opening block of this show? I said Tom Brady was lying. He was also complicit here. But who's to say that it didn't come from the head coach? It could have yeah. been years ago. But, but, the head coach but, but, but ordered I'm asking this. You. Okay. But in fairness, in fairness, Skip, what I'm asking you is, why do we have to bring Belichick into the equation? Why can't we reach as far as we're reaching with Belichick when it comes to Tom Brady? Why can't we entertain the notion that maybe, just maybe, it was Tom Brady that said? Look, this is how I want the footballs. He is the quarterback. It is possible. Okay. I'm saying if well, we're gonna content if we're gonna entertain this about Bill Belichick and everybody else, why does the guy that's the future Hall of Famer, three time Super Bowl champion, who is as close to perfection and imagery as it gets in the NFL, why can't we at least ask 
ask the question about him. Okay, you can entertain what you want to entertain, and I'll entertain what okay. I want to entertain. Okay. Okay, and Fine. Brian. And I'm going to entertain the fact that when you make a mistake, and this this goes back to learning when you first make a mistake and maybe slip something in your pocket and you steal something. If you make a mistake, you just own up to it. Okay. You just own up to the fact that you make that, that mistake and be done with it. Whatever the ramifications, you're the one that got oh, no. caught. Okay, but the ramifications could be that you Huge. don't get to play. Well, exactly. It, That's why they're not going to own up here, to here's it. The two, here's the two. The way that I see it, I could, yeah. I could be completely wrong. If it's Coach Belichick that would have done it because of the history with Spygate, it's going to be a much harsher, harsher fine. Okay. All right. A hey, much guys. harsher thing to deal with. All right. If it's Tom Brady coming out saying, you know what? This is what happened. My, my mistake. It probably maybe twenty five thousand. I'm not saying it's not a lot of money, but I think the max is something like twenty five thousand right. dollars, and then you move on from that. So there's a difference there. If it's the equipment guy, now it goes back to the organization, in my opinion, because somebody told what? this young man or the person right. to do to this do thing. It. Yeah. So it's going to come back what, on the what, organization what, no again. What. One last point. One last point. Tom Brady certainly has the power to do that with a ball boy, just like Bill Belichick would. Number one, but number two, and more importantly. Bill Belichick is known for saying very, very little, if nothing at all. And this man went on the record in front of the cameras. I don't know anything about that. Yeah. You'll have to you ask my You're quarterback. Right. You're right. What, what do you mean, though? I, I don't get you. Well, no, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, that's not something. Bill Belichick would go the route of saying nothing, that, uh, not pointing like, "Yo, ask him." He's known for protecting okay, himself and the organization with silence, not diming somebody out. Okay, but what if he just deserved an Academy Award nomination? <laughs> Seriously. What maybe if, that what was if his Tom greatest did? performance. What if, what if Tom Brady did? He didn't. I mean, he was pathetic. I mean, he was clearly yeah. not being honest. That don't, mean, that don't mean he didn't try. All right, oh, no. gentlemen, let's leave it right there. Uh, we will continue, obviously, more on this conversation when we come back. Uh, another... Hall of Fame quarterback weighing in on this situation. His words in just a few moments. Brian Dawkins sticking around with us. It's all about the money. It's all about the money.